today we are escaping out the back of the castle. We're trying to cross the river and getting away from the Spanish soldiers. You can see a few of them over there. While we're escaping, we get attacked by a Spanish guard. We're running away from these guys and we have to get across to the other side of the ravine on a pulley system. The ravine is, is the border between France and Spain. There's a chair that takes people over. Tower raising stuff over a hundred foot drop. We're about to film one of the biggest sequences that we've done to date on the Musketeers. Our director has storyboarded 70 shots in total and it's going to take the next three days to film this sequence. We've built part of a Spanish fort close to a ravine edge. Then we have blue screen in the middle and then we've built the far side of the ravine. I'm not a natural fighter. I don't think I'll ever be playing James Bond. I recognise fear. I have a great respect for fear. These boys don't seem to have any fear at all about anything. Obviously, we're not filming it on the real ravine because you can't put a crash mat in. It, you know, you can, but it won't make much difference. It has stunt boxes, has safety cables. It also has a crane. It covered everything. We have wires everywhere. Apparently, the zip wire can take 12 tonnes. So even if I've had a couple of donuts, it's, it's going to carry me, right? There were special belts made up with pulleys inside. The boys had to wear a harness, so they were never in danger of falling off. But um, it looks dangerous anyway. You're going to get a few cuts and bruises because, you know, you're playing roughy toughy boys. Basically, we, we have to get across to the other side of the ravine on a pulley system. Which everyone else gets across fine on except for me who breaks it and gets stuck halfway across it. D'Artagnan, being the superhero that he is, takes a death-defying leap onto the rope and kind of like shimmies across. My hand slipped at one point, but it looked, I think it, it worked for the story, do you know what I mean? Because my hand slipped and I managed to regain control, but it was fine. Now we'll do Howard. We'll do Howard now. Howie. Who's Howard? <coughs> This is Porthos. Yeah. All right, Dom. For this side, he's Howard. <laughs> yeah. This is quite a sophisticated crane. This is a techno crane. What's very clever about it is that it can swing around as any other crane does, but it also retracts. Uh, and projects on its own line, so it can suck itself in and back out, which means that it can go into positions that other cranes can't. So it's quite an expensive tool, uh, but it's a very sophisticated tool and perfect for this event, really. Because of the technology we've got nowadays, I was actually able to cut yesterday's stuff this morning, then go back to set with the rough assembly of what they shot so far, so they could see it, and then uh, they could decide if they needed some more shots and if there were any missing shots. With all the blue screen, the CGI, people will replace uh, all the background elements. I will track all the camera movement. I will build a basic 3D model, key the action out and replace it with, with the real ravine. This is day three of our ravine sequence in the real ravine doing a shot which brings our actors up to the real edge and then the camera will carry on over there and can look straight down at the sickening drop below. I'm not good with heights now. Cut there please, very good. This has been the biggest stunt that we've ever done to finish the end of the third day with everybody in good spirits and no injuries. It's a good place to be, I think. Probably uh, time for a drink. Mm -hmm.